In 2010, Navistar launched an engine it claimed would save the diesel world. No extra fluids, no complicated systems, no compromise. They called it Max Force, a bold leap ahead of the pack. But inside, engineers were worried. The system ran hotter, the parts wore faster, and real-world testing kept breaking things. Still, the executives pushed forward. They were not just selling trucks, they were selling defiance. Within five years, thousands of drivers were stranded, dealerships were overwhelmed, lawsuits exploded, and Navistar, once a titan of American industry, was on the edge of collapse. This is the story of Maxforce, the engine that did not just ruin trucks. It broke trust and bankrupted fleets, and nearly destroyed an American giant. If you grew up around diesel trucks, you knew the name International. You didn't just know it, you respected it. For decades, Navistar International was the backbone of American industry. Born from International Harvester, they built medium and heavy-duty trucks that hauled everything from farm equipment to military cargo. The trucks your grandfather drove. The trucks that built highways and fed cities. Reliable, tough, honest machines built for people who made their living with their hands. In the heartland, in rural shops, on long-haul routes, international trucks were part of the family. Fleet managers swore by them. Owner-operators took pride in that red diamond badge. Navistar earned that loyalty the hard way. One mile, one load, one decade at a time. They weren't the flashiest brand, but they were the brand you could count on. That kind of reputation doesn't come easy, and it doesn't disappear overnight. But when it does fall, it falls hard. By the mid-2000s, Navistar was still a major player. Government contracts, a massive dealer network, a blue-collar base that would not look at another brand. To most folks, International didn't just build trucks. They built the truck. But the world was changing, and Navistar was about to make a bet that would cost them everything. In 2007, the EPA dropped a bombshell. Starting in 2010, every heavy-duty engine had to meet new emission standards. Nitrogen oxide emissions had to drop to 0.2 grams per brake horsepower hour, a massive reduction. This was the kind of regulation that forced every manufacturer to rethink their entire lineup. This was not a minor tweak. This was a fundamental shift. Most manufacturers saw the writing on the wall. Cummins, Detroit Diesel, Volvo. They all developed the same solution, Selective Catalytic Reduction, or SCR. It injects diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, into the exhaust stream, converting nitrogen oxides into harmless nitrogen and water. It works, it is effective, and it became the industry standard. But trucks needed an extra tank. Drivers had to refill it. It added complexity, cost, and one more thing that could go wrong. If you're enjoying what you've seen so far, I hope you'll consider subscribing. It helps me preserve the history of these remarkable machines for future generations. Now, let's continue. Navistar said no. Hell no. Chief Executive Officer Dan Ustian was adamant. He did not want DEF. He did not want extra tanks. He wanted to win the emissions battle without compromising the driver experience. And on paper, that sounded incredible. So Navistar doubled down on exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR. The idea is simple. Take exhaust gas and road it back into the intake. It dilutes oxygen, lowers combustion temperatures, and reduces nitrogen oxide. Elegant in theory. But pushing EGR to meet the 2010 emission standards alone was something else entirely. That was the gamble. That was Maxforce. At first it sounded like genius. No DEF. No SCR. No compromise. They called it advanced EGR and positioned it as the smarter solution. Their ads showed trucks rolling down highways while competitors dealt with urea tanks and complex systems. The message was clear. We do not follow. We lead. But inside Navistar's engineering departments, people were worried. Advanced EGR was a high-wire act. When you recirculate that much exhaust, you are putting massive amounts of soot and heat back into the engine. Hotter combustion. More stress on every component. EGR coolers, working harder than they were designed to. 
When you push a system to its absolute limit, you are gambling with physics. Engineers raised concerns. Field testers came back with troubling data. Prototypes were overheating. Parts were cracking. Oil was contaminating. But the executives had already committed. Marketing was live. Dealers were trained. Orders were placed. Navistar was selling defiance. They could not back down. So they launched Max Force in 2010, right on schedule, and hoped for the best. Hope is not an engineering strategy, and reality was about to catch up. At first, things seemed fine. New trucks rolled off lots. Fleets placed orders. Drivers who hated DEF were relieved. Max Force looked like a winner. But then the problem started. The EGR coolers began cracking. They could not handle the heat and soot Max Force demanded. Coolant leaked into the exhaust, sometimes into the engine itself. Drivers saw steam pouring from under the hood, gauges spiking, warning lights flashing. When the EGR cooler fails, the engine can destroy itself. Then the turbos. Variable geometry turbos with electronic actuators that would stick and fail. Boost pressure went haywire. Trucks lost power on hills, on highways, in the middle of nowhere. Replacing a turbo cost $4,000 to $6,000 if you could get the part. And the diesel particulate filter, the DPF. Maxforce recirculated so much soot that the DPF was constantly clogged. The system regenerated every 200 miles, sometimes every 100 miles. A healthy diesel should go 1,000 miles between regeneration cycles. But these trucks were in constant regeneration mode, burning extra fuel, losing power, overheating. Drivers pulled over just to let their trucks cool down. When the DPF gave up, replacing it was $12,000. And it was not if, it was when. Some trucks did not make it to 100,000 miles before major repairs. These are machines built for 1 million miles. But Max Force trucks were limping into shops at 70,000 to 80,000 miles, needing repairs that cost more than some used cars. Warranty centers were overwhelmed. Parts were on back order for weeks and months. Drivers were stranded. Fleets were hemorrhaging money. Mechanics were furious. They would diagnose a problem, wait for parts that would not arrive, fix one issue, and two more would pop up. It was like chasing a fire with a leaky hose. Here is the worst part. Navistar knew. They knew the trucks were failing. But instead of issuing a recall and instead of redesigning, they kept building them. Stopping would have meant admitting defeat, admitting their competitors were right. They blamed drivers for poor maintenance. They blamed fuel quality. They blamed weather, everything except the engine itself. And with every excuse, they lost more trust. These were not just machines breaking down. These were livelihoods being destroyed. Let me tell you what it was like on the ground. The owner operators who scraped together a down payment, signed a loan, drove off the lot with a brand new international, proud as hell. Six months later, that truck was in the shop. A year later, they had spent $10,000, $15,000, even $20,000 on repairs. The loan payments did not stop. The bills did not stop, but the work did. When your truck is down, you are not making money. You are losing it. Some of these guys defaulted. They had spent careers building their reputation and Max Force wiped them out. Not because they did not work hard, not because they did not maintain their equipment, but because they trusted the wrong company. Then there were fleets running 20 to 50 Max Force trucks, contracts to fulfill, deadlines to meet. But their trucks kept breaking down. Loads were delayed. Customers were angry. Contracts were canceled. When they tried trading in their trucks, dealerships would not touch them. Resale value was gone. They were stuck with trucks they could not sell and could not afford to fix. Some companies went under. Decades of business. Wiped out by one bad engine and the mechanics. These are mechanics who love diesel engines, who can diagnose by the sound of the exhaust, who take pride in keeping trucks running. But Max Force broke them. 16 hour days on warranty claims. They would fix the same truck four or five times. Replace a cooler, the turbo would blow. Replace the turbo. The diesel particulate filter would clog. Navistar did not give them support. Technical bulletins were vague. Parts were delayed. 
Some just gave up and left the industry. Because Max Force was not just breaking trucks, it was breaking the people who cared about them. When a company betrays its customers, it is not about the money. It is about trust. These were people who believed in Navistar, who defended the brand, who told friends to buy international. And Navistar took that loyalty and crushed it. They did not just break the trucks, they broke the people who depended on them. That damage is permanent. By 2012, the whole thing was unraveling. The EPA was done playing nice. Navistar had been buying nitrogen oxide credits to stay compliant, but those credits were running out. The agency hit them with fines, costing millions of dollars. Every quarter, there were more fines and more pressure. The strategy was collapsing. Then came the lawsuits, class action lawsuits from fleet owners, owner operators, and dealerships. Everyone burned by Max Force wanted their money back. These trucks had been sold as reliable and efficient. Instead, they were money pits. The lawsuits alleged fraud, breach of warranty, and deceptive marketing. Navistar did not have a defense. The trucks were failing, undeniably and provably failing. Shareholders bailed and stock prices dropped. The company lost billions in market value. In 2012, Chief Executive Officer Dan Ustian resigned. The man who had championed Max Force was out, but the damage was done. Nevistar tried to pivot. They would start using selective catalytic reduction after all, but it was too late. Customers did not trust them. Fleets that had been loyal for decades switched to Freightliner, Peterbilt, and Kenworth. Market share cratered. Plants closed. People lost jobs. Not because the economy collapsed, not because of foreign competition, but because the company made one catastrophic decision and refused to admit it was wrong. By 2016, Nevistar had lost over $3 billion. The company that had been a pillar of American manufacturing was on the brink. They needed a lifeline. It came from Volkswagen. Yes, that Volkswagen, dealing with its own diesel scandal. Volkswagen saw an opportunity and acquired a majority stake. It was a rescue, but also a surrender. The American giant had fallen, and a foreign company picked up the pieces. Navistar did not just lose the emissions fight. They lost their identity, their reputation, the trust of the people who built their success. All because they bet against reality. When the engineers said it would not work, when the mechanics said it was a disaster, the executives did not listen. They doubled down, and it destroyed them. Today, mention Max Force in a truck stop and you will get stories. The brand new International that left someone stranded in Montana. The $30,000 in repairs in the first year. The fleet manager who swore off Navistar forever. Max Force is not just a failed product. It is a legend, a cautionary tale. There are still Max Force trucks out there. Sitting in back lots, unsold. Parked in fields, abandoned. Some guys swapped out the engines entirely, dropping in Cummins or Detroit's because the rest of the truck is fine. It is just the heart that is rotten. Resale value is terrible. Nobody wants them. Because everybody knows. In engineering schools, Max Force is taught as what not to do. How ignoring feedback and rushing to market destroys products and companies. It is shorthand for corporate arrogance, for ignoring the people who actually do the work. And Navistar? They are still around technically, but not the same company. The brand does not carry the weight it used to. They have rebuilt under Volkswagen. New engines, new trucks, new promises. But the old guard, the guys who remember when International meant something, they are not coming back. That trust is gone. Max Force wasn't just an engine that failed. It was a warning, a reminder of what happens when you stop listening to the people who know. When you prioritize marketing over engineering, when you let pride override reality. The men with the wrenches, the drivers, the mechanics, they knew Max Force was doomed from the start. They saw the heat, the stress, the failures, but the boardroom did not want to hear it. They wanted to be right more than they wanted to be smart. And in the end, the whole thing broke. Not just the engines, the company, the trust, the legacy. Max Force did not just bankrupt Navistar financially, it bankrupted them morally. It proved that no amount of heritage, no amount of loyalty, no amount of pride can save you if you ignore reality. And the saddest part? 
It did not have to be this way. If they had just listened, if they had admitted the technology was not ready, if they had been honest, they could have survived, but they did not. And now Max Force is all they are remembered for. Not decades of solid trucks, not military contracts, not loyal customers, just one engine, one catastrophic mistake, one betrayal that cost them everything. That's the legacy. And if there is a lesson in all this, it is simple. When you ignore the men with the wrenches, the whole thing breaks every single time. Thank you for watching. If you had the chance to work on one of these, or if you remember hearing that distinctive sound, I'd be genuinely interested to hear your story in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. There's much more to come.